Hey everyone, welcome back. Today I'll show you an awesome way to add texture and depth to your DTF designs using halftones. We'll talk about what halftones are, why they're great for DTF printing, and the different styles you can use. Plus, I'll show you how to create a one-click Photoshop action for halftones to make things super quick and easy. Let's get started. A halftone is a design technique that uses tiny dots to create shading and gradients. It's a cool way to add depth without needing tons of colors. You've probably seen it in retro comic books and newspapers. By changing the size, spacing, and shape of the dots, you can make areas look darker or lighter, giving your designs a really cool textured look. Halftones are great for DTF printing because they save ink, cutting down on cost by adding shading without using solid colors. They also add a cool vintage texture, make prints lighter and more breathable on fabric, and with a custom Photoshop action, you can apply the effect in one click, saving time on every project. Now let's dive into the step-by-step -step process of applying a halftone effect to our artwork. As we go, we'll explore the different types of halftones, how to apply frequency and what it means for halftone quality. To start, upload your sample artwork and ensure it's set to a 300 DPI resolution. This will give us the best quality for our final print. Once the image resolution is okay, we can proceed to the layer panel and make a copy of our image. To copy, simply press Ctrl plus J to duplicate image you selected. You can rename this copied image layer to avoid confusion and keep track of our layers. After renaming the layer, we need to convert our image to a smart object. To do this, right click on the layer and you'll see convert to smart object. Once converted, you'll see a small icon on the layer indicating it has been converted. Now we can start with our halftone effect, double click the small icon of the converted smart object and it will take us to a new tab where we will do the editing for our halftone effect. To start the process, go to the left part of our screen and select image and then go to mode and then choose grayscale. You'll notice the image is now in black and white. It's up to you if you want to improve the shadows and highlights of our image. To do this, you can go to image again, then adjustments and select levels. A box will appear where you can adjust the appearance of your image. Once you're satisfied, just press OK. In this part, we'll focus on the different types of halftones we can use and explore how adjusting the frequency, either lower or higher, affects the final look of the halftone effect. This will help us understand the variations and how they impact the design. In our next step, go to Image, then Mode, and select Bitmap. A prompt will appear asking if you want to flatten layers. Just click OK. Another box will pop up for the output resolution. Make sure it's set to 300 dpi. For the method, ensure you select Halftone Screen. After pressing OK again, a final box will appear where you can adjust the frequency, angle, and shape settings for your halftone effect. To put it simply, frequency and halftone determines how close or far apart the dots are. Higher frequency packs the dots tightly, giving a finer, more detailed look, perfect for smooth gradients and intricate designs. Lower frequency spreads the dots out, creating a bold, chunky, vintage style. The frequency you choose can really impact the design's vibe, whether you want a sharp detail or retro texture. As for angle, feel free to experiment. Changing the angle can add even more uniqueness to your halftone effect. Back to editing, here we'll start with a 16 frequency and a round shape halftone to see the result. Later we'll experiment with different shapes, but for now we'll stick with this setting to get a clear idea of the outcome. Just press OK. At this zoom level, the halftone effect might not look very obvious, but if we zoom in, we'll see that it has indeed been applied. The highlighted parts of our original image have been converted into halftone dots, and you'll notice that the image is now black and white but we're not done yet. Next, we'll select the entire image by pressing Ctrl plus A, then copy it by pressing Ctrl plus C. Now let's go back to our original document to continue. For the next step, ensure our halftone smart object is selected. In the layers panel, click on the add layer mask icon at the bottom, which will add a blank white box next to our current layer. Then hold the Alt button and click on the mask to turn our document completely white. This is where we'll paste the copied image from earlier. Just press Ctrl plus V to paste it. 
allowing us to use the mask to control where the halftone effect appears. After that, go to solid color and select it. Choose a dark color in the color picker to serve as the background. Rename this layer for organization and position it below the halftone layer. And here we have our halftone image. Here we're using different frequency settings. As mentioned earlier, a lower frequency spreads the dots further apart, which creates a bold retro look that works well for designs with a more textured or vintage feel. On the other hand, a higher frequency brings the dots closer together, resulting in finer details and a smoother appearance. If you're planning to use your design for DTF printing, a higher frequency is usually better because it allows for a more detailed and refined print, capturing subtle gradients and intricate details more effectively. And we're not limited to just round shaped half tones here. There are many other styles, each adding a distinct texture to your design. For example, diamond half tones create a sharp geometric feel, adding a bit of edge to the artwork. Suited for modern geometric designs or any artwork that could benefit from a bit of edge. The angular pattern adds a touch of boldness and can make parts of the design stand out. Ellipse halftones are similar to round shapes but add a slightly stretched oval look for a more stylized effect. Ideal for softer, more organic designs or stylized illustrations that have a flowy or dynamic feel. The ovals create a subtle shift from the round dots, adding a bit of variation that's noticeable but not too extreme. One of my personal favorites, the line halftone gives a sleek striped texture that's perfect for adding movement or a modern feel perfect for futuristic or tech inspired designs. These are excellent for creating a sense of motion, adding a sleek, minimal texture that enhances depth without too much detail. Line halftones are also great for shading as they create a smooth gradient effect. Square halftones have a blocky appearance, which gives a pixelated or digital vibe to the design. Ideal for designs with a digital or pixelated look, or when you're aiming for a bold graphic style. They're also useful if you're working with low resolution images or want to emphasize a digital aesthetic. Lastly, cross halftones combine horizontal and vertical lines, creating a mesh-like effect that adds a lot of visual interest. Best for industrial or grunge inspired designs as the mesh like pattern gives a rugged, almost gritty texture. This style works well for DTF or screen printing on apparel as it stands out with a bold textured look that holds up well in print. Now that we've covered the types of half tones, let's move on to Photoshop actions. A Photoshop action is a recorded set of steps or commands that you can play back automatically to apply to your images. It's like a shortcut to save you time Instead of doing each step manually, just click on the action and Photoshop will do it for you. You can find the actions panel by going to the top menu, clicking window and selecting actions. This opens the panel where you can create, save and apply actions to your images. Photoshop also has default actions that you can check out to better understand how actions work. But in this part, I'll show you how to create your own halftone actions. To put it simply, we're gonna repeat the process we did earlier, but this time we'll record the steps. This way you can apply the same halftone effect to future designs with just a click, saving you time and effort. To start below the actions panel, you'll see a folder icon. This is for creating a new set. Click on it and a dialog box will appear. Name the set something like halftone sets. And now we have a folder for all the actions we'll create. For this video, we'll create actions for all the different types of halftones but let's start with the round half tone first. Next to the create new set icon, you'll see a plus icon. Click this to create a new action, rename it to round half tone. You'll also see options for the function key and color. The function key allows you to assign a keyboard shortcut to the action so you can quickly play it back later with just a key press. The color option lets you choose a color for the action to make it easier to spot in your panel. For now, you can leave both of these as they are. Once you press record, the process will start and Photoshop will begin recording every step you take. Let's start recording. As you can see in the actions panel, every step is being recorded. Photoshop keeps track of everything you do, like changing settings or clicking buttons. Each action shows up as a step in the panel so you can see what has been done.
Once all the steps are complete, go to the lower part of the actions panel and click the square icon to stop the recording. And now we have our round half tone action ready. Now let's add a background so we can better see the result of our action. This will make the half tone effect stand out more and help us see how the action looks on a complete design. Finally, let's test the action we created on another image to see if it works as expected. This will let us know if the process runs smoothly on different images. Along with the round halftone action, we've also created actions for the other halftone types we discussed earlier. Now we can quickly apply these halftone styles to any design with just one click, saving time and effort for future projects. Thanks for tuning in. If you found this helpful, be sure to like, subscribe, and share to help others master halftone techniques. See you in the next tutorial.